Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I thought it'd be a fun idea to take a very early look at the 2028 electoral map, which in all likelihood will probably feature J.D. Vance, Donald Trump's current vice president, as the Republican nominee. And on the Democratic side, there's probably going to be over 20 candidates running in 2028 for the Democratic nomination. So we have no way of knowing right now who it's going to be. But my two top candidates right now and who I think will be, it will be either Gavin Newsom, Josh Shapiro, and I also put slash other other form of Democrat who ends up winning it. Regardless, it doesn't really matter too much. And I want to take a look at the electoral map based on the 2024 presidential election and what are some changes I think the electoral map needs to start off as going into the 2024 election. So I'll start in the West Coast with the state of Washington and its 12 electoral votes. Washington voted 58 to 39 for Kamala Harris. That is a safe Democratic win. Un or no surprise here. I think in 2028, Washington starts off as safe Democratic. Oregon, 55 to 42 for Harris over Trump, a 13% win. Again, not much of a surprise here. Oregon still starts off in 2028 as safe Democratic. California, 54 electoral votes, largest state in terms of population in the United States. 58 to 39, although there is still 63% of the vote in, so we still have a lot more votes to go. California will undoubtedly be a safe Democratic state. Next, we're going to go to Hawaii while we're down here. 61-37, no surprise in 2028, I think Hawaii will be a safe Republican state. Alaska, right now 56 to 40, Trump is leading over Kamala Harris, 16% lead. This will be a safe state for J.D. Vance. And we're going to go now to the state of Idaho. Idaho and its four electoral votes, a safe state for Donald Trump. We're going to come back to the toss-up states like Arizona and Nevada because I think it's a little bit worth giving a little bit more attention to those. Montana, 58-38 for Trump. Wyoming, 72-26 for Trump. And Utah, 59-38. We can put all of those as safe states for J.D. Vance. Looking at the state of Colorado, it was a win by Kamala Harris, 54-43. So an 11% win. You can make the argument for likely Democratic, but I'm pretty solid that Colorado will be a safe Democratic state. Looking now at New Mexico, 52 to 46, a 6% uh, win for Harris over Donald Trump in New Mexico. Actually really, really close. You could really make the argument this should start out as either likely Democratic or lean Democratic. I'm going to start it out as probably likely, but you can really make the argument that it could be put as lean. Now to North and South Dakota, safe for Trump, safe for Trump, and we're going to do Nebraska as well. At the state, large, state at large is safe for Donald Trump, so I'm just going to do those really, really quick. Safe at large. Now we're going to get into the districts themselves for Nebraska. The first district, 13 points, that's safe for Trump. The third district is safe for Trump, so I'm going to put those in for Donald Trump. And now we're going to look at the second district which ended up being a win by Kamala Harris by just 4%. So very, very close. You could start it out as a toss-up if you want. I'm going to start it out as lean Democratic. I think that's where Nebraska's 2nd District in 2028 will begin. Kansas and its 6 electoral votes ended up being a 16-point win for Donald Trump. I think that's more Republican than it was in 2020 or 2016. So Kansas, even though it could have been a potential scare depending on how the election goes, Kansas would go into the safe J.D. Vance column. Oklahoma and seven electoral votes, no surprise here. This will be a safe win for J.D. Vance. Texas, this might have been the biggest shock of the night to me. Donald Trump winning the state of Texas by 14% over Kamala Harris after it was under 10%. I believe in 2016 and 2020, Donald Trump winning it by his biggest margin and the biggest margin in Texas, I think, since John McCain in 2008 or maybe even since George Bush in 2004. Without a doubt, Texas is back to being a safe Republican state. Vance is at 83, and the Democrats, Newsom, Shapiro, others, currently at 94. Now we'll look at Louisiana, Arkansas, and Missouri. Louisiana, safe Republican. Arkansas, safe Republican. And Missouri, safe Republican. All those states go safe for J.D. Vance. Now we're going to do Mississippi and Alabama. Unsurprisingly here, 61-38, 65-34. This is a safe Democratic state. Now we're going to look at Tennessee, which was a 30-point win for Trump, Kentucky 35 or 65-34, and Indiana 59-40. Those would all be safe states for J.D. Vance, unsurprisingly. And while we're here, let's just do West Virginia. West Virginia 70-28, probably the most Republican state in the country. That will go 
for J.D. Vance safely. So now we're going to look at the state of Illinois and its 19 electoral votes. This is really fascinating. Illinois was ended up winning by Kamala Harris over Donald Trump by just 9%. Just 9%. So the Democratic stronghold of Illinois might actually start out as a likely Democratic state according to this election result from 2024, which is something I never thought I would ever be saying. But the margins under 10, that would be a likely Democratic state. Iowa. Uh, that poll showing it to be a three-point lead for Harris or six-point lead for Harris was way off. This is a 13-point win for Trump. Iowa goes into the safe J.D. Vance column. Minnesota and its 10 electoral votes ended up being a four-point win for Kamala Harris. Very, very close, but under 5%. So that would put the state of Minnesota into the lean Democratic column. Very, very close to being a toss-up, but lean Democratic. Now we're going to go to the state of Florida. Florida has 13 electoral votes, a 13% win for Donald Trump over Kamala Harris. I mean, again, I expected Trump to win this state, but not by this much. This certainly, I think, puts Florida into the safe Republican column. Georgia, we're going to come back to, as I believe it is a very close toss-up state. South Carolina and its nine electoral votes. Unsurprisingly here, 58-40, this will be a safe Republican state. North Carolina. North Carolina, 51-48 for Donald Trump. Very, very close. Going to put it as maybe toss-up, maybe lean Republican. You're going to have to wait and see on this one because Georgia also is two points. Georgia is definitely going to be a toss-up. But North Carolina, I'm thinking of starting it off as like lean to tilt Republican. I think I start off North Carolina as tilt Republican. Virginia, Virginia ended up being a five-point race for Harris versus Donald Trump or just a bit under. Very, very close. Virginia, I'm going to start off for 2024 as lean Democratic, not the safe Democratic state that it looked like it was in 2020. Virginia, I would start off as lean Democratic. Now we're looking at the state of Maryland. This one should not be much of a surprise. A big win for Kamala Harris over Donald Trump, Maryland, and Delaware, 57-42, 15 points. Both of those states would be safe for the Democratic candidates. And Washington, D.C. will definitely be safe. I don't even have to look at it. I know how this is going to go. D.C., trying to find it on the map. There it is, 92-7. to 7. That's a safe state. So now we're going to look at the state of Ohio, where Donald Trump won it by 11 points over Kamala Harris. I think we can officially say Ohio, no longer a swing state, now a safe Republican state. J.D. Vance, being from Ohio, I think will also give him a little bit of an added boost. That puts Vance at 234, Newsom Shapiro at 152. Now we're going into the Northeast, again with some toss-up states that I'll circle back to before we get there. Uh, Pennsylvania, I'll circle back to New Jersey. New Jersey, this is fascinating. It was a six-point win for Kamala Harris over Donald Trump. That's it, only six points. Very, very close. New Jersey potentially could be on the Republicans' radar in 2028. At six points, I start New Jersey off into the likely Democratic column. The state of New York. New York ended up 56-44, to 44, a 12% win for Kamala Harris, just borderline between being a likely Democratic state but New York still remains right now in the safe Democratic column. However, maybe that changes going through 2028 or after 2028. But for now, New York continues to be a safe Democratic state. Now we look at Connecticut. Connecticut at 7 by 12 votes ended up being 14%. That will be a safe Democratic state. Rhode Island, 14% safe Democratic. Add those to the map. No surprises here. Massachusetts and its 11 electoral votes. This was a big win for Harris over Trump. That will be a safe Democrat, as well as the state of Vermont, the state's safe Democratic. The state of New Hampshire. This is a really interesting one. I thought for sure New Hampshire was done, but it was a three-point win for Kamala Harris over Donald Trump. You know, I think it's real. it was a lot closer than I expected, to be honest, in New Hampshire. I don't think it's a likely Democratic state anymore. I can't call it a pure toss-up state yet at 3%. I mean, it's possible J.D. Vance could win the state of New Hampshire in 2028, but I think I'm starting it off as lean Democratic. Now to the state of Maine, where Maine's at large is a 7-point win for Kamala Harris. The 1st District was a 20-point win. 2nd District was a 9-point win for Trump. So the way I'm going to do this is Maine at large is going to be a likely Democratic state. Maine's 1st District is safe, and J.D. Vance in the 2nd District would be likely. <clears throat> so right now, Vance starts off with 235 electoral votes in 2028. Newsom Shapiro 
or any other Democrat would start off with about 226. And now we're going to look at the toss-up states. I already did North Carolina. I think North Carolina would start off as still Republican. We're going to look at the state of Georgia. Georgia, a two-point win for Donald Trump over Kamala Harris. A very, very close state, a close race. Certainly, certainly a very close toss-up race to start out. I think the way 2028 starts right now, narrowly that would start out as tilt for the Republicans, but that's really going to be a very close race. Basically, if you're asking where the electoral map begins, the electoral map still begins with Newsom, the Democrats, at 226, advanced the Republicans at 219, and then all of these battleground states, and these are all still battleground states. If you want to make the argument for maybe Minnesota, Virginia, or New Hampshire being toss-up states now and not lean Democrat, I would listen to that argument. I could certainly see it. But for right now, I still think the electoral map in 2028 starts off like this. As I mentioned, a, a three-point win in North Carolina for Donald Trump. I think North Carolina would start off as tilt Republican. Georgia would also start as tilt Republican, I think, at this time. The state of Arizona would still have some votes to go, but Trump is leading 53 to 46, a 7% lead. Yet, I think the margin could be smaller than that at the end of the day, but at the very least, and again, this is probably being generous to the Democrats, I think Arizona starts off as a lean Republican state at the presidential level. You could really make the argument for likely for Republican right now. You can make the argument for tilt, but I think lean Republican is where Arizona would start right now. In the state of Nevada in its six electoral votes, Donald Trump currently has a four-point lead here. Again, you, I think in this one you can make the argument that it's a lean Republican state. But Donald Trump has also been the only Republican since 2004 to win this state. So I'm going to start Nevada off as a tilt Republican state. I don't think it's as solid red as Arizona is. So advanced starts 268. Newsom Shapiro and other Democrats start off 226. This is where I think the election is going to be decided. And man, this one is really close. Trump is a three-point lead in Pennsylvania, a 1.4% lead in Michigan, and a 0.9% lead in Wisconsin. This is tight. This is really tight. I think Pennsylvania starts off as tilt Republican. And I think you can make the argument Michigan and Wisconsin should be tied, to be honest. Um, I, I, I don't want to leave two states uncalled, but I think it's probably where it would be at Michigan. I think right now if the election, based on the election results of 2024, the map would obviously look like this. 312 for Vance, Newsom Shapiro 226. But... In actuality, I think Wisconsin and Michigan probably remain tied. Pennsylvania has a little bit of a boost. North Carolina, I think, definitely would start out as tilt Republican. But, I mean, if we're being real here, the election map is going to be like this come 2028. It will be 219 to 226. You could make the argument Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Virginia are in play. You can certainly make that argument. Then at the bare minimum, it would be 219 to 199. But... I think right now those states would stay in the lean Democratic column. And I also think that North Carolina, I'm going to start off on my rankings when we get to 2028 as lean or tilt for Republicans. Yes, it's a toss-up race. Yes, it's very close. But in the last three presidential elections now when Trump has been on the ballot, the polls have showed it to be a pure toss-up. The Democrats are capable of winning. And the Republicans have outperformed the polls in North Carolina and won every single time. And I don't see why that's going to not continue in 2028. So Vance, I think, starts off with 235. Newsom Shapiro and others starts off about 226 with about 77 toss-up electoral votes remaining. And if you want to add in Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Virginia, that would bring it up to 104. North Carolina would bring it up to 120. Again, that's all a preference thing. But I think there is a little bit of a shift in New Mexico, Illinois, and New Jersey in terms of going from safe Democratic to likely Democratic. And I don't think New York is all that behind either, as well as the state of Maine. So that'll do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a brief little exercise. Of course, we're a long way till 2028. But as we saw with 2024, hey, time can fly by really quick. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of it by liking the video and leaving a comment below telling me what you thought. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hope to see you in a future video. That will do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a like. And if you really liked it, please remember to click the subscribe button and make sure you turn post notifications on so you always get notified when I post a new video. That way you never miss one. Also, please remember to share this video with your friends and family if you really, really, really like the video. 
And remember to stay tuned because I'll be posting at least one video every single day leading up until election day. So I'd really appreciate it if you keep coming back and watching those videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.